Uh, good afternoon to everyone. For uh, today's class is Plutonic Igneous Rocks. Right? Plutonic Igneous Rocks. So, what are the Plutonic Igneous Rocks? I already told yesterday in, in yesterday class. So when magma, right? So this is the magma chamber, right? So when magma never reaches the earth surface and cools to form intrusion, uh, sorry, intrusions. So what are the intrusions? Uh, those are uh, dikes and seams, right? So that resulting rocks are called plutonic rocks. So these are the plutonic igneous rocks. Right? So depending on uh, the silica content, SI open. And they are called uh, gabbro, um, dolerite, gabbro, and also dolerite and granite, and also pegmatites, right? So, by the quantity, these rocks are the by far most common rock types, right? So, you see, first one is granite. So, granite is a felsic and it is a coarse and medium grain rock. So generally it is equigranular rock, right? Equigranular texture. So granite uh, shows light in color and also it is intrusive rock. So it is the most uh, common plutonic rocks of the earth crust. It is forming by the uh, cooling of magma means silicate melts at, uh, at the uh, level of depth. So it is composed of uh, quartz and also feldspar, right? Or, or two of them, right? And also orthoclase, microclean, hornblende, albite. And generally mica, mica biotite or muscovite. So instead of the whole or a part of the mica, they may be hornblende or it is rarely pyroxene that is agate, right? So the commonest granite is that composed of quartz, uh, feldspar and also a block mica that is called uh, biotite mica and also white mica. White mica means muscovite. So other varieties are biotite granite and with black mica only. So muscovite granite with white mica only, hornblende granite. So these are the uh, have granites. So these rocks are contains uh, 65 percent, 65 percent to 80 percent silica, right? 65 to 80 percent. So you see, this is the, uh, this white color indicates uh, quartz and also the block color, those minerals are hornblende and also this light color that is indicates feldspar, right? So this is the granite rock. And also biotite, biotite also, you see, this is also, granite rock, right? So biotite, biotite also it may occur in a granite of any uh, type of and it is usually present through sometimes in very small amounts. So thus, sodic amphiboles and pyroxenes are characteristics of the alkali granites. Uh, if neither feldspar is in great excess, neither amphibole nor pyroxene is likely to be an essential uh, constituent. So the other minerals, so those are, it will uh, then ordinarily be 
either biotite or muscovite or both right so granite may occur in dikes or uh, sills but more characteristically uh, it forms irregular masses of extremely variable size and ranging from uh, less than 8 8 kilometers right 8 kilometers in maximum dimension to uh, larger masses so that are often hundreds or uh, thousands of square kilometers in uh, something area right so this is the granite you see so what is the granite group plutonic group is plutonic in color is variable but typically light color and texture is phenyritic that is medium to coarse grain and the mineral content uh, those are minerals orthoclase plagioclase and quartz right and also biotite muscovite are amphibole okay so in silica content right you see here 69 to 77 percentage right or 65 to 80 percent you can write 65 to 80 or 69 to 77 so up to 80 percent right so this is the uh, granite and also silica content 69 uh, up to 70 percent right and also it comprises some of the oldest uh, known rocks that is on the uh, earth surface so these result in type of uh, granotites what is that granotites so those are derived from uh, the igneous protoliths and it's containing moderate amounts of uh, al2 O3 and also it is high amounts of Na2, Na2O and also some of the S type uh, gran granitites. Okay, so those are derived from the sedimentary protoliths and it's containing high amount of Al2O3 and also it is relatively low amount of Na2O. so amphibole and pyroxene so those are more common uh, in uh, l type gran uh, granitites so while s type granitites it may have garnet um, and also sillimanite right so these both types of granitites it may also contain uh, biotite biotite so this biotite and muscovite right so this this is the granite group and some of the properties and also granite uh, using uh, as building stones some of the uh, pouring of the granite was at one time a major industrial activity right and also granite used in highway constructions right and also large industries and commercial buildings so this is the granite and next one is granodiorite so granodiorite it is a medium to coarse grain right okay medium to coarse grain uh, and also texture is uh, phenyritic so the rock that is among the most abundant intrusive igneous rocks right intrusive igneous rocks so it is composition between uh, diorite and also granite right so it contains uh, quartz also right 
quartz compound quartz and it is distinguished from uh, granite by it's having more or large amount of sodium and also calcium and also a rich plagioclase feldspars uh, and orthoclase feldspars and its other mineral constituents includes hornblende um biotite biotite and also uh, some of the agate right so biotite and biotite and amphibole so those are often in the form of hornblende right hornblende so these are more abundant in granodiorite than in granite so it is giving it a more distinct or uh, two toned or overall darker appearance so mica may be present in well formed hexagonal crystal system right hex sorry hexa Right? Hexagonal crystal system. So some of the minor amounts of oxide minerals such as uh, magnetite, magnetite, right? Magnetite and ilmenite. And as well as some of uh, sulfide minerals. So may also be those are the present in this rock, right? So uh, according to uh, QAPF, QAPF. What is the QAPF? It means quartz alkali feldspars and plagioclase feldspars and also feldspathoids, right? So that is called QAPF diagram. Right, so this granodiorite has a greater than twenty percent of quartz by the volume in it, and also between sixty-five to ninety percent of the feldspar is plagioclase. So some of the greater amount of plagioclase, it would be designate the uh, rock as tonalite, right? tonalite so the plagioclase usually forms a twinned crystals sometimes wholly encased uh, by orthoclase so the mode of formation and occurrence and also physical appearance and mineral compositions and also texture of granodiorite so those are much like those of granite so granodiorite is dark and in color however because of its uh, greater plagioclase uh, content then so you see this group is plutonic in color is variable but typically light colored and texture is phenyritic that is medium to coarse gray and also mineral content quartz plagioclase orthoclase biotite diorite and hornblende right and silica content how much silica percentage it have so 63 to 69 percentage right so these are it can be used as aggregate fill etc so in the construction and road uh, roads industries right so it cut in Uh, polished for dimension stones for some of the uh, building faces right building faces etc so this is the granodiorite so you see the picture another picture here okay. the next one is diorite 
so diorite many diorites uh, those are truly igneous rocks so it have uh, crystallized from molten material that is magma right so diorite occurs in uh, small bodies such as uh, sills and also dikes and also uh, stocks are as more uh, irregular masses those are associated with the uh, gabbro and batholiths of granodiorite and granite so diorite is an coarse grain intrusive rock so it is a composed of hornblende <clears throat> hornblende and feldspar right so the hornblende in the equal amount are in greater quantity than the feldspar and one third dark color minerals such as uh, hornblende are biotite so that's why the rock is shown dark in color right so often uh, this feldspar shows uh, uh, as light in color uh, spots right light color spots so the presence of uh, uh, sodium rich feldspar sodium rich feldspar so those are mostly of the less acidic varieties and oligoclase and labradorite right so diorite uh, sometimes it has um, quartz and uh, then it may look like granite also right so it is particularly if the feldspar is about as uh, plentiful as the horn grain so it is the main distinction between diorite and uh, gabbro right diorite and gabbro so amphibolite or horn horn blendites so those are consist mostly of horn blend so it is produced in volcanic parks and in mountain buildings where it can occur in large volumes as batholiths in the roots of mountains so because it is commonly speckled black and white color you see this right so it is often referred to as salt and pepper rock right salt and pepper rock <clears throat> so you see this so group is plutonic and direct color is typically speckled black and white right so texture is phenyritic that is medium to coarse green texture and mineral contents so plagioclase amphibole hornblende or pyroxene that is called augite right so silica percentage is 50 to to 63% so diorite has about the same structural prop properties as um, granite but uh, perhaps because of its darker uh, darken color and more limited supply so it is rarely used as an ornamentals in sorry some of the building material so it is one of the uh, dark gray stones so that is sold commercially as uh, black granite right black granite so granite and granodiorite and diorite so in india so these uh, granites and granitic rocks are found extensively in uh, karnataka right karnataka and also rajasthan
ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ರಾಜಸ್ಥಾನ್ ತಮಿಳ್ನಾಡು ಎನ್ ತೆಲಂಗಾಣ ಎನ್ ಎ ಪಿ ಓರಿಸ್ಸಾ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಬೆಂಗಾಲ್ ಎನ್ ಬಿಹಾರ್ ಅಸ್ಸಾಂ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹಿಮಾಲಯನ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಹಿಮಾಲಯನ್ ರೀಜಿಯನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಮೌಂಟ್ ಅಬು ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ರಾಜಸ್ಥಾನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಗ್ರೆನೈಟಿಕ್ ಬ್ಯಾಥೋಲಿಕ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ತೆಲಂಗಾಣ ದೀಸ್ ರಾಕ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಫೌಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೇನ್ಲಿ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಹೈದರಾಬಾದ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಮಂ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇನ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಪ್ಲೇಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಪಿ ಗುಂಟೂರ್ ನೆಲ್ಲೂರ್ ಪ್ರಕಾಶಂ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಗ್ರಾನೋ ಡಯೋರೈಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಯೋರೈಟ್ಸ್ ದೋಸ್ ಆರ್ ಫೌಂಡ್ ಟು ಅಕರ್ ಆಸ್ ಮಾರ್ಜಿನಲ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗ್ರಾನೈಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ವೇರ್ ಬಿಹಾರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ right we are in karnataka right so this is the granite granodiorite diorite so first of all where do granite and gran granodiorite form this is the question so granite and granodiorite so those are intrusive igneous rocks right so that slowly cool deep underground in magma chambers so that is called plutons so this slow cooling process allows easily visible uh, crystals to form so both rocks are the product of the melting of continental rocks near subduction zones right so this is the granite uh, granite and granodiorite formation so what is the difference between uh, this granite and granodiorite tell me anything okay so granite so these uh, granite and gra- uh, granodiorites are both classified as granitic because uh, they both are rich in uh, quartz right rich in quartz so granite contains mostly potassium feldspars and it has a low uh, percentage of dark iron and some of the magnesium minerals so in contrast granodiorite contains more uh, plagioclase right plagioclase feldspar then potassium feldspar and has more dark in minerals so thus it is a darker color than granite right so you see the difference so this is the light color and this is a uh, darker color than granite right so the chemical and x-ray analysis of granite and granodiorite it can be used to fingerprints so these rocks right so so this is the difference between granite and granodiorite so where do you find granite and granodiorite so granitic rocks are found on continents around the world near active or fast plate boundaries so they formed as magma cold many kilometers below the at surface so the granitic rocks were then uplifted to the surface as the volcanic mountains above them eroded away so for example uh, some in california california granitic rocks form the uh, core of the sierra nevada right so that is pulled from rock melted during the subduction process so that is also formed the uh, rocks of franciscan complex so the granite and granodiorite so those are also found uh, some of the west of the san andreas fault near monterey paspicia and point trees so where granite uh, from the south end of the sierra range it has been transported northward by the san andreas fault movement right 
So why do some granitic uh, rocks have both large and uh, small crystals here? See the difference between here. So this type uh, for rock is called porphyry, right? So the different um, crystal sizes are the result of different rates of cooling at the magma body. It is moved upward direction. So the large crystals uh, that is called uh, phenocryst, right? Phenocryst. So those are usually feldspars, uh, feldspar crystals. So this feldspar is one of the first minerals to form uh, large crystals as magma solidifies. So they grew as the magma cooled very slowly deep in the magma chamber, right? Magma chamber. So later the magma with the Phenerocryst, this Phenerocryst moved quickly upward into cooler rock. So that is causing more rapid cooling of the remaining molten rock to the uh, form. The So you see here, there is a lot of white uh, texture and a lot of uh, that is all for clay feldspar. So that is generally potassium feldspars, right? So they are white. So generally it has been between um, 35, right? 35 and 90% all for clay. Clays and it has, you can see here, right? Also, it have like a smoky color, right? Smoky color. So, which is indicate, what is that? Quartz. So, that is uh, quartz between 62 to, sorry, 60 and 20 percent, right? It should 60 to 60 and 20 percent. And so, with those two minerals, they actually make up a majority of actual rock as you can see here right side right so and then so this is the granite granodiorite and diorite rock So this rock it contains different minerals. So each of these minerals is not classified right, right? So it is a chemical molecules because it is all different types of atoms in it, right? So next one is cyanide. So cyanide is an intrusive igneous rock. So it is belonging to the alkali series, right? Alkali. Like this. So this is also 
intermediate plutonic rock in alkali feldspars so it is the alkali feldspar so this is the major mineral component of the in this cyanide so a special group of alkali cyanide uh, that, that is characterized by the presence of a feldspathoid mineral such as nephilim cyanide right nephilim and also lucite or sodalite right so chemically cyanide contains a moderate of a moderate amount of sorry silica right silica so it is relatively large amount of alkalis and alumina right so the cyanide in may be uh, uh, defined as quartzless granite right quartzless granite so the commonest uh, variety is hornblende cyanide so which looks very much like hornblende granite but the absence of quartz right so that is distinguishes one uh, from the other so sometimes a little quartz so that is present in in cyanide so some of the rock quarry um, as granite for building stones and paving blocks that is really cyanide so cyanide contains of uh, 50 50 to 65% of silica so it is found in uh, continental settings and typically results from the uh, partial melting of the lower crust so cyanide is the plutonic equivalent of trachyte so uh, the texture of cyanides are like uh, that of granite right so that is granular granular texture and these rocks different from granite only by the absence or scarcity of quartz so the alkali feldspars present it may include orthoclase right orthoclase and albite or uh, more rarely microcline also so and the ferromagnesian minerals it may be biotite hornblende or pyroxene so in the alkali cyanides the aggregates are pyroxenes those are frequently contain sodium so the more normal cyanides are divisible uh, sorry divisible according to their prevalent dark color mineral into augite hornblende and also biotite cyanides but like granites cyanides are also divisible according to the type of alkali um, uh, feldspars into k soda like that means potash soda potash and soda cyanide so the accessory constituents what are the accessory constituents so those are include um titanite and apatite zircon and also magnetite and pyrite so cyanides are much less common than granites and diorite so the rocks known as normada nor nord markite right n a r k i t e right those are soda cyanide right so this is the sign right and you see the what is the group plutonic and color is variable but typically light in color texture is pyritic medium to coarse grain texture and mineral contents what are the minerals orthoclase 
plagioclase and minor mica, agate, hornblende, and also magnetite. So, what is the silica content in in that cyanide? So, that is sixty-two to sixty-five percentage. So, this cyanide is used in dimension stones for building casings, right? And also some of the road uh, industries also, road constructions, right? So this is the cyanide. This is nephelin cyanide. You see the difference between this is cyanide how it looks like this. So this is nephelin cyanide. So this is also medium to coarse grain texture, right? So it is also intrusive igneous rock. So a, a member of the alkali cyanide group um, that is consists largely of feldspars, feldspars, and also nephelin. So it is always uh, considerably poor in silica and also richer in alkalis than granite. So the extraordinarily varied mineralogy of the nephelin cyanides um, and uh, their remarkable variation in habit, fabric, appearance, and also composition. So those have attracted much attention. So and more petrographic research, it has been devoted to them than to any other plutonic rock. So this nephelin cyanide uh, from Canada that is used to replace feldspar, right? Feldspar in the some of the manufacture of uh, ceramic and glass uh, products, right? So this feldspar in nephelin cyanide it may be cryptoperthetite or rarely it is a mixture of albite and microclean albite and <coughs> microclean so this nephelin is sometimes uh, that is replaced by soda light right soda light so the commonest dark silicate is uh, green pyroxene in alkali amphibole and also it is also abandoned. So in some areas, pyroxene is uh, that is virtually absent and it is replaced by a mixture of hornblende and biotite. So these rocks that contain more than 30%, right? 30% of either dark silicates are nephilim. So that is usually or not called nephilim cyanide right nephilim cyanide so quartz and calcium quartz and calcium so these calcium rich plagioclase uh, feldspar so those are absent in this rock so but calcite is almost never absent and it may be abandoned so these minerals rich in zirconium titanium and rarely it occur frequently and sometimes in great abundance. So the amount of nephilim cyanide and it is related volcanic or plutonic rocks in the lithosphere. So that is very small. So they occur in great variety on every major land mass and volcanic representatives. So those are known from the from a considerable number of oceanic islands right so <coughs> plutonic nephilim rocks ordinarily occur in uh, some small complexes and some quite isolated but most in closest uh, close associated with if uh, effusive rocks of some similar composition <coughs> sorry <coughs> so this is the nephilim cyanide and next one is gabbro. Gabbro, it is also a medium in 
coarse grain igneous rocks. So that is consists of primarily <coughs> of uh, plagioclase feldspar, right? Plagioclase feldspar and also pyroxene. So essentially, gabbro is the intrusive plutonic equivalent of basalt. So, but whereas bas uh, basalt is often remarkably homogeneous in mineralogy and composition and gabbros are exceedingly variable. So, gabbros are found widely on the earth and on the moon as well. So, gabbros are sometimes uh, that is quarried for dimension stone, right? Dimension stone in the so that is the black granite of commerce, right? So more importance, those are the primary mineralization of nickel, chromium, and platinum. So that occurs almostly exclusively in association with gabbroic or related ultramapic rocks. So primary magnetite and ilmenite. So these mineralizations are often intimately associated with gabbroderic, sorry, gabbro complexes. So this is the gabbro rock. <coughs> So, <coughs> next one is anarthosite. You see this picture is anarthosite, not anarthite, this is anarthosite. So, anarthosite, so this type of rock is called uh, intrusive igneous rocks. So, those are composed predominantly of, what is that? Calcium rich plagioclase feldspars, right? Calcium rich plagioclase feldspars. So, all these um, anarthosites found on earth consist of coarse crystals. So, but some places of these rocks taken from the moon are finely crystalline. So, most of the anarthosites form during pre-Cambrian times. Pre-Cambrian times, right? So these anarthosites is considerably uh, less abundant than either basalt. Basalt or granite. So, but the complexes in which it occurs are nevertheless often the uh, immense size. So for instance, uh, about one, sorry, one lakh fifty five thousand square kilometers, right? Square kilometers. That is 60,000 square miles. Square miles. Of, it is in eastern Canada. Right? Eastern Canada. That is underlain by Anartha site. So, so, right? So you see the, uh, the picture here. So, although these large masses are generally supposed to provide the best sample of the deep lithosphere, so they often appear to be flowed over most of the outcrop area. So, they usually occur as lacoliths, right? Lacoliths. And also low polyps, right? So the Canadian anarthosites, so those are thought to be lacolith, right? So why, uh, so you see in this picture,
So this is the lacolith. So anarthocytes, uh, anarthocyte dikes, uh, those are very rare and that is effusive equivalents of anarthocytes are unknown, right? So these are the anarthocytes. And the next one is pyroxene. So if you see this picture, pyroxene also dark in color, right? So it is intrusive igneous rocks. It, it consists, uh, that is chiefly pyroxene. You remember this? Pyroxene. So these pyroxenites are not abundant. So they are occur in discrete inclusions in layer seals and low polyps and in branching veins in narrow dikes and also at the edges of silica poor plutons. Right? Silica poor plutons. So in Many of these uh, pyroxenides, which have been named according to their dominant, this pyroxene, right? This pyroxene mineral. So, diapsidite, diapsidite, which occurs in the pyroxenes, and orthopyroxenes, which occur in the bushveld of South Africa, right? So, this is the pyroxene. So these pyroxenes uh, occurs in South Africa. Next one is peridotite. So peridotite, it is very dense in coarse grain, right? You see here, dense in coarse grain texture. So this is also uh, medium dark in color, right? So it is ultra mafic intrusive rock, ultra mafic intrusive igneous rock. So it is contains at least 10%, 10% it is that all in O L I V E in the all in. So other iron and magnesium rich minerals and not more than 10%, right? So it is a common component of oceanic lithosphere and it is derived from the upper mantle of the earth, right? Crushed mantle. Core. So, this is the mantle. So, upper mantle of the egg. So, it is found on land as part of oceanic crust sequences. So, those are called ophiolites. Of your lives. So, which have been thrust in or onto a continental mass or as localized intrusions. So, it occurs in four main geological environments. So, first one is interlayered with iron, right? Iron. So, and also lime and magnesium rich rocks in the lower part of the tabular layer igneous complexes. And second one is, so in alpine types, alpine type mountain belts, so those are as irregular, right? Irregular. And that is alvin rich 
olive in olive in rich uh, masses uh, with or without related gabbro in third one is in volcanic pipes right volcanic pipes so those are fennels are more or less oval in cross section so that become narrower with increasing depth right so those are kimberlites kimberlite and fourth one is as dikes and irregular mosses with rocks exceptionally rich in uh, potash and soda so these are the four geological environments so the layered complexes are believed to have been formed in place by selective crystallization and crystal settings uh, from a previous intruded fluid or intruded magma so the remaining type seems to have ranged from fluid magmas that is to semi solid crystal mushes at the time of emplacement right so <clears throat> peridotite is the ultimate source of all uh, chromium right all chromium ore and those are naturally occurring in diamonds right diamonds and of nearly all uh chrysotile asbestos so it is one of the main uh, host rocks of tar that is deposits and platinum metals and it is formerly was a major source of magnesite right so the fresh dunite uh, that is used in a parts of glass of glass uh, industries so nearly all peridotite so those those are more are less altered to serpentine and it is cut by uh, many irregular shear surfaces so in warm humid climates uh, this peridotite and sar this serpentine those have weathered uh, to soils and that those are related deposits that so now worked on a relatively small scale those are enormous of uh, potential sources of iron right iron nickel and cobalt and also chromium right so these are the enormous potential sources so you see the group is plutonic and color is generally dark greenish gray color and texture is phenyritic coarse grain and minerals contents is generally olivine you remember this olivine grain right so with less pyroxen that is augite and dunite is dominantly olivine and always contain some metallic minerals examples chromite right and also magnetite and silica percentage is less than 45 percentage okay right? so this is the peridotite and last one is dunite so dunite so it is also light yellowish green color you see here how it look likes light yellowish green color or light green color so it is also intrusive igneous now um, ultra mafic ultra mafic igneous rock so it is composed almost entirely of what is that so what is this green color indicates 
all win remember this all win composed of all win so that's why this color is shows green color so all win is the green color so it composed of almost the entirely in uh, of all win right so dunite uh, that is usually forms of sins right are some of the pipes so that become narrower with increasing depth right so it is a common rock in the earth upper mantle earth upper mantle so these occurrences include uh, some of the in new zealand right new zealand from which the rock takes its name dunite right so dunites uh, con uh, constitute an important source of chromium also right chromium so a commercially valuable metal right so this is the dunite so today class is over okay these are the plutonic igneous rocks right